All right, so I've been trying to uh, diagnose a, a no spark situation on my 03 uh, Sportsman, and I'm following the uh, uh, the ignition system test flow chart here. So uh, one of the test procedures requires you to test some um, wires at the CDI. So um, I believe I've found the problem, but I figured I'd document how I determined that. Um, maybe not the whole process, but uh, at least how I was able to determine what the issue is with mine. Okay, so one of the uh, procedures on the flow chart tells you to, to uh, test the pulse coil, or in this uh, diagram here, they're calling it the trigger coil. So it's uh, white to white red. It should be 97 ohms, and then you test white to ground. Uh, here they call it the trigger coil. So, um, so what you need to do is you need to identify those uh, wires, white to white red. Uh, that's white blue. So these two here side by side. All right, I'm just going to use these little pin leads here because my tester leads won't fit in there. All right, so you want to dial your uh, tester in to dial to test uh, resistance or ohms. And obviously, um, if you don't have alligator clip leads for your tester, you're going to have to at least uh, clip one together because if you're touching them with your fingers uh, you can also be making that connection okay so I've got one clipped on yeah, obviously you don't want to be touching any metal so we're getting uh, 28.8 ohms so um, it's supposed to be 97 so obviously there's a problem with the pulsar or the pulse coil well, the trigger coil, as it's called in the uh, manual here. So what I'm going to do now is test the white to ground, because that's the other part of the procedure here. Okay, so I'm just verifying that which lead is on the white here in the... No, I'm not talking about my lead. I'm talking about the lead here in the, in the um, CDI clip or jack. And then I'm just going to take uh, another one, and I'm going to ground it out and see what we get. Now, we shouldn't get any, any connectivity here at all. And we're not. So that that test actually passed, but I'm not getting enough resistance on the uh, pulse coil. And I know why that is. I'm just going through this process in case anyone else is uh, trying to figure this out. So I'm going to plug this back in, and we'll move on to uh, the location of the uh, the pickup. Okay, so we're down here on the uh, the uh, magneto cover, and um, I've already got most of the bolts out. I've already been in here and. It's done a little bit of testing, so it's a 5 16 inch socket. Um, I've got you've got to pull the uh, the footwell off. There are a few bolts are you know that hook the footwell to the uh, the deck as well as to each uh, the front and back fender. So uh, what happened here was well a couple of things. Water obviously got in here. There was no gasket. It, was, it looks like Permatex was used uh, when this coil has been changed before and they used permatex they did not use a gasket so that's a problem uh, another thing that happens a lot of times is water gets in here but this is this is seated pretty tightly so uh, but you'll be able to see how rusty it is okay so the pulse coil is over here let me move the camera here all right so you can see here i'm just going to pull these phillips screws out so we can haul this out of here but you can see it's been changed before it's got some wire ties on it and um i'm, I'm hoping the situation is that rust build up on this uh magneto there's a raised section on the magneto that comes around and basically triggers the spark um, that's why they call it a trigger coil also i'm hoping that rust built up and hit this thing um, otherwise I could have slop in this bearing and I hope that's not the case because that's a much larger issue um, I've grabbed a hold of it and tried to move it but I don't know I'd, if I'd feel that kind of play anyways so the uh, tolerance according to the manual is about uh, 0.4 to 1 millimeter um, gap on between this and the raised portion of the magneto and I'll see if I can get you a shot of that but you can see obviously that uh, 
the tolerance was a little close. So there's uh, is what I'm hoping is our problem. Now I don't know if this can cause other problems with the coil and such. So uh, you're going to find out as soon as I do. So what I'm going to do here is cut these out. I'm going to try to preserve as much of this original wire as possible. And I'm going to do it differently. It looks like this was crimped on. I'm going to solder it and use uh, shrink tubing. But let me see if I can get you a, a shot of that raised section here. Okay, you can see the beginning of it here. Alright, so it looks like I was wrong. Wouldn't be the first time, but it looks like it was soldered and the shrink tubing was used. So, let's see here if we can pull this apart. Incidentally, this is a pretty common uh, problem. Uh, if you break your uh, pull rope, not just on this wheeler, but on a lot of these types of engines, if you pull your, if you break your pull start, you know it's best not to drive. Uh, you know, if you can start it with the electric start, because what ends up happening is whatever is remaining in here of your pull start, of your rope rather, can actually come around and whip this, uh, and it can either back it off. And set the gap too much, or it could it could knock it into the uh, magneto itself or the flywheel, uh, or just the whip itself or the impact of the rope can damage that pickup coil. So, uh, a lot of times this happens when the pull rope breaks and people continue to drive uh, the machine. Anyways, that's not the case here. So uh, I'm hoping it's not an issue with the bearing. I'm hoping it's just that a layer of rust built up on this. And I started the engine, and it came around and hit it. So we'll see. I've got a, I've got an aftermarket uh, pickup coil. Let's install that next. All right. So I've got my uh, shrink tubing on. I've got my wires twisted together. I've got to be a little bit careful because I'm kind of famous for uh, shrinking the tubing before it's time here with my soldering iron. And that's not what I want to do. one. Let's see if we can get the other one here. There's already solder on the wire too from from uh, before. So, alright, let me put the uh, shrink tubing in place here. Looks like I did okay. So uh, I didn't show you this bracket before, but this uh, this bracket originally on there. And oddly enough, I found the same zip ties in the tool kit that were already used. So, and I can definitely tell this pickup coil uh, magnet is working. Um, but I am going to be cautious about the gap. I think I'm going to go basically around 0.75 of a millimeter. So right in between. Point, the, the, the book says 0.4 to 1 millimeter. Because uh, I'm not entirely sure why it was rubbing. Alright, so I ended up adjusting this a little bit closer. Uh, I, I'm at a little uh, 0.61 and the tolerance was 0.4 to 1 millimeter, so I'm a little bit on the close side. 
Uh, let me back it off a little bit. I'm just going to see if the thing starts. I'm going to put the starter Bendix back in. I don't think I showed the removal of this, um, but I wanted to be able to get the uh, camera in there so you could see everything. This just pops in. Okay, and then on the case, um, this is why I had the case uh, uh, you know, on with a couple of bolts. Um, the end of that Bendix pops into this, uh, this little spot here. So you can't really bump it over without this case on, so that's why I just put a couple of bolts on. So what I'm going to do is put this on with just two bolts, and then I'm going to kick it over, and we'll find out together whether or not this works. Okay, so you see I have a bolt here, and a bolt here, and that's just to keep this case on. You know, I'm not going to run it like this. Again, remember, I still have a gasket on order, so even if this works, I can't take it for really out for a ride. I could ride around. I may let it run a little bit. I want to see if I get any kind of um, indication that there's... Uh, play in this bearing so I may let it sit and idle a little bit rev it up a little bit take this cover back off and see if I'm getting any kind of uh, abrasion on this new pickup coil because I don't really want to ruin it uh, and that would be an indication that this has uh, some slop in it which I'm hoping is not the case so let's give it a shot here that's it sounds good so hopefully this video has been helpful. Uh, this is uh, basically diagnosing uh, the pulse coil on a Polaris uh, Sportsman. What I may do while I have the front all apart is uh, go through the rest of the uh, troubleshooting procedure. We can test the, uh, the actual coil itself, the ignition coil. Uh, we can also test the stator. Uh, resistance, um, uh, which is again on this ECM plug. So, thanks for watching. Hopefully, this video has been helpful. Leave questions and comments below. And if you're having a no spark situation, you know, don't give up. Stick with it. You can figure it out, and it'll save a bunch of money. Have fun.